What's up YouTube, Saf here on Super Saf TV and this is my full hands-on review of the HTC One M9. Now before I start, a big thanks has to go out to three for making this video possible. I'll be linking to them in the description below. They've got the M9 and lots of other devices with great deals. You can definitely go ahead and check them out. So the M8 was considered one of the best smartphones of 2014. Does the M9 have what it takes to be considered one of the best smartphones of 2015? Well, let's find out in this full hands-on review. So initially, let's kick off with the display. You've got a five inch super LCD three screen. This has a full HD resolution, 1920 by 1080, roughly about 441 PPI pixel density. Now this is the same as last year and it's not quite HD. And as much of a fan of pixels I am, this wasn't a huge deal because the display is still very nice. It's sharp, it's got some nice colors with some good viewing angles. I mean, it's not as vibrant I found as other displays such as Super AMOLED displays, but some people actually prefer that. Now the design hasn't really changed either compared to the previous model. You've still got a metal unibody and they do now have a dual tone version as well. And in my opinion, it looks very, very nice, very slick, premium and it's got some beautiful construction. I mean, I've heard some people describe the construction as something that you'd find on a nice watch, and I have to agree with this, and it really goes well with my watch. Would I have liked to have seen something different? Uh, probably, I mean, it would have been nice to see something a little bit different to last year, but this is not necessarily a bad thing because the M8 was a beautiful smartphone. They have made some changes to it. Firstly, the power button is now on the right-hand side rather than the top, which is actually a good thing, but the placement of it is really annoying. I mean, it's more towards the center than the top. Now, if I show you how you'd be using your device in your hand, so if you are right-handed and you're using the device in your right hand, your thumb naturally goes towards where the volume buttons are. So if you do want to use the power button, then you have to kind of move the device down and it doesn't really feel comfortable. Even when you have the device in your left hand, then your index finger can't reach it. You sort of have to use one of the other fingers. Once again, not very comfortable. I really wish HTC had stuck with the traditional volume buttons on the left hand side and the power button on the right hand side. This is what we see on loads of other devices and it works absolutely fine. So I'm not sure why they've done this. I really hope they change this in future models. Now, another negative that you may find on the build is that it's a little bit slippery. It's not as slippery as the M8, but I did find there was lots of times when I thought that it's just gonna slip out of my hand because it's got a very smooth surface. Now, HTC are offering an OO service, which they're calling, and that means they will replace your device in the first year if you do accidentally break it this however is only for us users so in my unboxing i did mention this service and then i later found out that it's not available outside of the us so this is just something to bear in mind if you are in the us then you are in luck now moving on to the performance this thing is packed with some good specs you've got the snapdragon 810 octa core 64-bit chip with the Adreno 430 GPU and three gigabytes of RAM. Now in my experience, this was very fast and powerful. I didn't have any lag that I noticed anyway in my day-to-day -day usage. And I did try quite a few things at one time and it didn't seem to give me a problem. So this is a very, very fast device. In terms of storage, you've got a 32 gigabyte option and you do have expandable storage. So this is expandable by up to two terabytes via the micro SD card slot. Now, this is something that they mentioned on the website, not that you'll ever find a two terabyte micro SD card, not right now anyway. And this I have to say is great to see because many manufacturers are just getting rid of the micro SD card slot altogether. Now let's talk about the cameras. So you've got a 20 megapixel rear facing camera, which is capable of filming 4K. Now this was supposed to be an improvement over the four megapixel ultra pixel camera that they had previously. And you can check out a side by side comparison of the HTC One M9 versus the iPhone 6, which should help give you an idea of the quality. But to summarize, I would say that it's inconsistent. That's the word that I can use, inconsistent. It is a capable camera, but it's hit and miss. I'd have to take a few shots just to get the right one. Some would be out of focus, some would be overexposed, some would be underexposed, and it was just not a great experience overall. Video was also not great. The stability on there is not so good. It's not got optical image stabilization, which is a downside considering that a lot of the competition have it. And I'm sorry to say, but I think HTC are still playing catch up in terms of the rear facing camera to a lot of the competition out there. I really hope they can fix some of these issues with a software update because 
it has potential of being a nice camera. Now, thankfully, the story is much better for the front-facing camera. You've got a 4 megapixel ultra-pixel camera, so this is what we had on the rear-facing camera in the M8. And it's great for your selfies. I'd say it's probably one of the best smartphones out there for selfies. You've got some great low light shots as well, lots of detail. And I was overall very impressed with the front facing camera. Now moving on to the operating system, you've got Android Lollipop. So this is the latest version of Android and you have the HTC Sense UI on top. Now I actually like HTC Sense, it's nice and clean and you've got lots of customization. You can customize themes. And one of the new things that you've got on here is the home widget, which will learn how you use the phone and it will suggest apps based on where you are. So if you're at home or work or something. Now, I personally found myself not using this because I like having my apps in one place and I generally tend to use the same apps all the time. So with me, I prefer having my apps in a set place once I've put them there rather than them changing. So I personally did not find myself using this, but I'm sure it will be useful for a lot of people out there. Now, talking about some additional features, one thing we cannot ignore are those stereo boom sound front facing speakers. This time they come with Dolby Audio. Now I have to say these are the best speakers on a smartphone that I've used and you've got some very nice crisp sound and if you are somebody who consumes a lot of media, watches a lot of videos on your smartphone, then I think you are going to love these. There's also an IR blaster, so this is also quite useful. There's a notification LED which is within that speaker grill. I wish it was a little bit larger and a little bit brighter because sometimes, you know, from a distance you couldn't even see it. So if it was lying on my desk, then sometimes I wouldn't actually notice that I had a notification and that kind of defeats the object. So I wish it was a little bit larger. It is there, however, and it's not too bad. Now the battery, you've got a 2840 milliamp battery. This is not removable and I found it to be pretty good. It did get me through the full day on a medium to heavy use. I think if you're a very heavy user and you're gonna be gaming and things, then you will need a top up. But otherwise, you should be fine. It is quite nice, I think, because it's still got a 1080p display. It's not so demanding on the battery. Now, finally, looking at the price. Off contract, if you wanted to pick this up SIM-free, then you'll be looking at roughly about £580 here in the UK, around about $650 in the US. So standard flagship prices, a little bit less than some of the other competition out there. So the HTC One M9, there's lots of things that I like about this device, and there's a few things that I don't like. I mean, for me, some of the key things, firstly, the build, it's a very, very nice build. It shouts premium all over. Yes, it's similar to last year's, but that's not a big deal for me. It takes great front-facing camera shots, so it's a great selfie phone, and it's probably one of the best selfie phones out there right now. And those boom sound speakers are still not matched by the competition. I'm surprised some of the other competition haven't tried to copy or match these speakers to this extent. This has some great speakers. If you're somebody who likes to watch a lot of media on your smartphone, then these are gonna be great for you. Now, in terms of what I don't like, it has to be mainly the camera. I mean, hopefully HTC can fix some of the issues with the camera with the software update. We'll have to wait and see for that. Uh, but uh, other than that, it is a very, very nice phone. Now, who is this for? If you've got the M8 right now, I'd say hold on to it. Maybe wait for the M10 or the next version of the HTC one. And if the build of a device is important to you and you take more selfies than you do rear-facing shots, then this is still gonna be a great option for you. What do you think of the M9? Do drop me a comment below and let me know your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then please do hit that thumbs up button for me. It really does help me out. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this channel. I've got plenty more content coming up in here, including full coverage of the S6 and the S6 Edge. If you wanna see one of my previous related videos, that will also be linked here in the annotations. There'll also be links in the description below. And if you wanna stay in touch with me on social media, I chat a lot of waffle on there to then you can follow me there too links will be in the description below and the addresses will be there somewhere thanks for watching this is Saf on super Saf tv and i'll see you next time